Jesse and Frank James rode the Outlaw Trail from about 1866 to 1882. During that time, many robberies took place that were attributed to the Jameses and the Youngers. But it does seem that some, if not many, of the lawlessness was perpetuated by others who could get away with the foul deeds if they were attributed to the James Younger Gang. Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Thanks for joining us for Letters from the Old West. Other outlaws being identified as Jesse is probably what prompted him to start writing letters to several newspapers. Some historians claim Jesse was guilty of all the crimes and was just falsely claiming he was innocent, while others disagree and side with Jesse in his writings and believe many nefarious characters were literally getting away with murder under the shroud of, if it's a robbery, Jesse must be to blame. The Huntington Bank is a very good example of making someone wonder just who is telling the truth. The Bank of Huntington was chartered in July of 1875 in a small brick building on the north side of 3rd Avenue, just east of 12th Street. Shortly after it opened on September 6, 1875, there was a daring holdup. Local legend says the robbery was committed by the famed outlaw Jesse James and his gang, but many historians doubt that claim. It is said Jesse James and three other members of the James Younger Gang robbed the Huntington Bank in Huntington, West Virginia, making off with cash estimated between $10,000 to $20,000. There are many newspaper articles reporting about the holdup and some of the happenings afterwards. Here are a few of them. Published in the Interior Journal, Stanford, Kentucky, September 17, 1875. On Tuesday night last, W.R. Dillon, near the house of his brother, Doc Dillon, in Rockcastle County, shot and mortally wounded a Virginian who turned out to be one of the gang which recently robbed the bank at Huntington, Virginia. He was watching the road, it seems, when four men on foot passed by between 12 and 1 o'clock. On halting them, he was fired upon and he returned fire with the above result. The other men ran away. The wounded one, after being taken to the house, admitted that they were the robbers but refused to tell his name. He had on his person $100.25 fractional currency. The whole county was up at last accounts in search of the other three. Then published in the Courier Journal, Stanford, Kentucky, September 24, 1875. The robber, the man supposed to be Jesse James, and who was shot at Pine Hill last week by W.R. Dillon, died there last Sunday evening and was buried near Pine Hill. Mr. Dillon and his brother Doc have done a noble deed and rid the whole country of one dangerous and bloody outlaw. A few more such men as the Dillons scattered around over the country would make bank and railroad robbing a very precarious business for these darling scoundrels, and they would eventually put a stop to it. We hope they will be able to secure the reward which is said to have been offered in Missouri for one or all of this gang of highwaymen. A letter published in the American in Nashville was forwarded in a special dispatch to the Stanford, Kentucky Courier Journal. Here is part of what they had to say. Now comes the Nashville American with another letter from St. Louis of which Jesse James is purported to be the author. The letter is sent as a special from Nashville and is published below. It will be perceived that it is devoted to a denunciation of Captain Bly and Detective Pinkerton, the two best detectives in the country. Captain Bly is especially denounced in the severest of terms in the letter. Coming as it does from St. Louis, the authorship looks rather suspicious. The letter is entirely different in phraseology and spelling from any of Jesse James' former letters, the grammatical construction and spelling being generally good, although there is an attempt at a poor formation of sentences, while all his former letters were illy constructed and very badly spelled. Looking back at this article, it seems that the slant has been put on it that to think Jesse was not now dead would be a bit ridiculous and someone else had written the letter. This is a letter from Jesse that was published in Nashville, Tennessee, September 24th. The following letter has been received by the American. St. Louis, September 21st, 1875. To the editor of the American, in a previous communication I spoke of how the Jameses and the Youngers had been lied on by Bly, the incompetent detective of Louisville, Kentucky. I will take the present opportunity to inform you that Bly's recent statement about the James and Younger boys robbing the Huntington Bank is false. Instead of my being shot and captured, I'm in St. Louis with my friends. 
well, feeling much better than I have for years. I can't see what motive anyone can have in reporting such malicious lies as Detective Bly is certainly doing. I know that Jarrett and the Youngers had no hand in the robbery, and if the wounded robber is ever recognized, it will undoubtedly be seen that he is not a James, a Younger, or a Jarrett. Bly is a perfect gas pipe and is unworthy of the title of detective. He has never captured but one man, and he slipped on the blind side of him. As for shooting, he doesn't know what that means. I am thankful that at least one robber has been got who was published everywhere by Bly as being first Cole Younger and afterwards Jesse James. The world can now see that neither one of the Jameses and Youngers are the men shot and captured. Every bold robbery in the country is laid on us, but after a few of the robbers have been caught and when it is seen two or three times that other people are robbing banks, maybe we will get a fair play from the newspapers. In a few days, it will be seen how the Jameses and the Youngers have been lied on by such men as Pinkerton and Bly. I and Cole Younger are not friends, but I know he is innocent of the Huntington Bank robbery, and I feel it my duty to defend him and his innocent and persecuted brothers from the false and slanderous reports circulated against them. I think that the public will justify me in denouncing Bly as I now do, as an unnecessary liar, a scoundrel, and poltroon. Very respectfully, Jesse W. James. Courier Journal, St. Louis Times, Globe, and Kansas City Times, please copy. Mr. Editor, please publish this letter for me. I am innocent of the Huntington robbery, and this is the only way I have to defend myself. J. W. J. With all this and much more going on in the newspapers in September of 1875, it is for certain the country was riveted to each day's paper, wondering if Jesse was dead or alive. We know now that he was most certainly not killed in 1875. These letters are so important in many ways. One of the most important things is they show us for certain the phrases and words used by people who lived in that time. In many Western films these days, the language that is used is so inaccurate, it is just ridiculous. What an amazing set of words and phrases Jesse uses at the end of the letter to denounce Captain Bly as an unnecessary liar, a scoundrel, and poltroon. I can imagine what many a modern film company would change the language and words to in a script and then claim that it was historically accurate. Thanks for joining us for Letters from the Old West. We hope you'll join us here again. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day.